Even the most laid-back groups are going to contend with tough encounters sooner or later. The rotation of moderate, low, and severe combats with a pinch of trivial and extreme encounters is incredibly important to how the game feels. When you encounter an ogre at level 1, you might poop your pants. But at level 6, the ogre does the pooping because you can take on many of them at once. Pathfinder 2nd Edition is also designed to be a smart game. You don't need to be a tactical genius, but doing well does require some degree of focus, and when it comes to monsters higher level than you, it's mandatory. The thing is, while success in any encounter is never guaranteed, the basic principles I'm about to outline will always boost your chances, and they actually have nothing to do with individual character abilities. Instead, it's a type of mindset, and there are a few rules to follow, and each of them bleed into each other. And they are math, action economy, and teamwork. I'll break it all down as simply as I can. In most systems, boss monsters are underwhelming. In my years of running games under a variety of systems, I had to always give a boss monster minions, even if it didn't really make sense for the fight, otherwise the party would just mop the floor with them. And the reason they could do that is because of the action economy. The players had more actions than the boss and could overwhelm them. Now, the players still have that same action advantage in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and it's actually one of your strongest weapons against a powerful creature. But Pathfinder 2nd Edition balanced this aspect in a different way, and that's what makes the combats in Pathfinder 2nd Edition equally exciting and frightening at times. You can never, under any circumstances, out-damage a monster that is a few levels higher than you. I don't care if you have four barbarians taking turns swinging at it, you will lose that trade nearly every time. This is because a monster that is higher level than your party has a large mathematical advantage, and while you can argue with me, you can't argue with math. A higher level creature is mathematically superior to you in nearly every statistic. That's the balancing factor a single monster has that allows it to contend with four player characters at once. It means that while each barbarian is swinging at it, they are missing frequently due to its high AC. When the monster strikes back, it's not only likely to hit any one of them due to its high attack, it also has a high chance of critting them thanks to the 10 over and 10 under system. Meanwhile, the attacks the players do manage to land almost never crit at all. Not only that, while a third attack action from a player is almost always going to be a bad move, a high level monster has the potential to actually land it. So while the barbarian mosh pit is only landing a fraction of their attacks, the monster is putting one of them down every round, and with each fallen friend, the player's action economy advantage shrinks. If the GM doesn't fudge in your favor, this is where you will likely have a player character death or worse, a total party wipe. If the GM fudges, that removes the stakes. Stakes are important to enjoyment, which is probably why my vegan girlfriend is always angry. The only way you can win a stand-up blow-to-blow fight with a monster that's stronger than you is pure luck. The GM rolls really bad and your group has a night at the casino. That does happen on occasion. But if that's how you win, you might as well dump white out all over your character sheet and just flip a coin the next time you see a dragon. Heads, you all die horribly. Tails, you pull a deus ex machina black arrow and smog the dragon with it. Somewhat amusing if a bard is in your party, but otherwise it's an anticlimactic end to a long build up. The more reliable way to win is by using your action advantage to take away or at least soften the monster's mathematical advantage. Each character has three actions. A party of four has 12 actions between them. The monster has three. Sure, you can't just face check it because each of its actions carries murder and death, but you still have an edge. To make it simple, every single action the monster has is worth three of yours. If you can waste a single one of the monster's actions with one or even two of your own, that's a massive win, even if you don't deal any damage. This could be every bit as simple as just getting out of its reach so that it has to burn an action to get to you. The monster taking an action to move is one less action it can use to hurt you. 
A lot of systems have really trained players that anything that isn't dealing the most damage possible was a waste. It's probably why so many players insist on swinging with a minus 10 on a third attack that will only ever land on a natural 20. Damage wins all is simply not true in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. That's because making as many attacks as possible doesn't guarantee damage happens at all, even in moderate encounters, but especially in severe or extreme ones. In tandem with using your action economy advantage, you also need to do what a lot of players call buffing and debuffing. I don't actually use those terms, because they paint a picture of those super boring support classes and MMOs that no one ever wants to play. I call it teamwork instead, because it's more accurate. Pathfinder 2nd Edition is a cooperative game. Your character is part of a team. There is never a time where you are going to succeed in an encounter on your own even in moderate ones. If that's what you're looking for, you want Skyrim, not Pathfinder. The monster's numbers are higher than yours. You need to raise yours or lower the monsters, that way your group can deal with that sweet damage that everyone's craving. You all have to work together to set up openings for each other to make it happen. Sure, you are technically buffing and debuffing numbers, yet no one ever says that someone is buffing LeBron James by passing him the ball right before he slam dunks it. It's close enough to the same thing, just with less math, or at least a different kind of math. It also doesn't mean that you only ever pass the ball, but maybe instead of making three attacks and whiffing two of them, the barbarian attacks once, then they use demoralize, and then they get the hell away from the monster so it has to chase them. You have numerous tools that you can use to do this, from tripping, grabbing, disarming, to a ton of different spells. The aid action alone is almost never used, but can go a long way towards setting up moments that can alter the battle into your favor. It's also about attempting to tilt the odds in your favor in the first place, instead of just throwing spells like dirty laundry into a questionably crusty sock sticks. Figure out what the lowest defense of a monster is, through knowledge checks or other means. Heck, you can even just use common sense a lot of the times too, and it's not even metagaming. That big bulky ogre is probably tough, fortitude saves won't even make it sneeze. That really nimble assassin probably has good reflexes, maybe hold back on the lightning bolt for wands. That is, unless you use teamwork to potentially lower it so that you can bring the thunder. Those are all reasonable assumptions that nearly any character smart enough to point a sword or wand the right way could make. Making an effort to understand those principles will have a massive impact on your success. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be either. When it comes to the math, the important thing to realize is that the monster is stronger than you. The important aspect of the action economy is your party has four times the actions a single monster does. If you have the opportunity to trade one or two of yours for one of its, make the trade. Understanding teamwork doesn't mean you have to be the Avengers. It means understanding that helping others also helps you, because it snowballs. Helping one player land a good spell or action can lead to another effect that allows another player to land something big and repeat. It can give your entire party momentum to deal more damage, inflict potent conditions, and take less damage, including you. One example I can give was a couple of months ago, my group and I had a session zero where they made new characters for a campaign. We had some time left over, so I threw together a simple on-the-spot combat just to let them test their new characters. The fight wasn't canon, it was just for fun, so I threw something mean at them. It was a creature that likes to charge at things, and that's how I ran it. It would charge in for a ton of damage, put distance between the party with its superior speed, and then do it again. The fight could have very easily been a slaughter. But my barbarian player ready to trip action instead of butting heads with it. When the thing charged and entered his reach, he tripped it. The charge was two actions. Now it was prone and had to stand up. Its whole turn was instantly invalidated. Sure, he could have failed the trip, but if he had opted to attack instead, he could have failed it just as easily with far less potential gain. So my players had a free round to lay into it. When the monster's turn came around again, I decided it would take a swipe at the barbarian and then put that distance between them again to charge. But oh no, the barbarian also had the no escape feat. 
which meant as a reaction he kept pace with the monster for part of its move. A single trip action not only burned the monster's entire first round, but allowed the barbarian to break the individual creature's playstyle and strengths. He forced it to fight on his terms instead. Now to be completely honest, the rest of the players did terrible. They blew their load of spells with reckless abandon and whiffed attacks constantly, yet it still ended up being pretty trivial. I don't think my barbarian player did it with any knowledge of action economy or debuffing. It was just the simple realization that running up to the monster and hitting it might not be the smartest course of action, and he was right. Every party, character build, monster, encounter, and even environment is different, so how you apply these principles will always vary. But as long as your party actively tries to utilize your action advantage and teamwork to actually land those strong attacks and fancy spells, you're going to do far better. And the most important thing to take away from this is that you can never outdamage the monster head on. Math has no sympathy, and it will not pull any punches. A GM fudging for you is not mercy from the numbers, it's just someone clumsily attempting to hold back a giant kickboxer named Arithmetic so that they don't have to clean your blood from the ring afterwards. If you can't find a way to beat a monster without doing that, running away is a very underutilized strategy that could prevent a lot of character deaths in Pathfinder. Rest in peace, Mei Fong. She died for a canoe. If you enjoyed this video, liking and subscribing is immensely helpful. I've also left a few links down in the description below. One on my website where you can find the bulk of my written content, and one on my Ko-fi page if you feel like tossing in a donation. In any case, thanks for watching, and until next time.